What's up guys, it's Will here, back again, and today we're here to talk about something very important, and that is Hot Toys Addiction. We're gonna talk about how to avoid Hot Toys Addiction, how to make good purchasing decisions, and how to add the right Hot Toys to your collection. Before we get started, make sure to click that like button down below, click the subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you are notified when content goes live on this channel. That said, let's avoid Hot Toys Addiction together and add the right figures to our collection. When you find the right hobby, you know it. And Hot Toys collecting is the right hobby for you. You're probably asking, how does Will know that? Well, if you're a fan of movies, books, video games, storytelling in general, then there's probably a beloved character somewhere in there that you'd love to have a lifelike representation of on your shelf. That encompasses almost everyone. This video was also suggested to you by the almighty algorithm and it knows you better than you know yourself at this point. Collecting Hot Toys can be a very exciting and fulfilling hobby, but it can also be a dangerous one. Incorporate too much of a good thing into your life and it becomes no longer good for you. So when it comes to collecting hot toys, where do we draw the line? This is the question we must ask ourselves. And when we dig a little bit deeper into this question, it's important that we distinguish wants from needs. So we're gonna do just that today. Let's first start by defining the word need. Need is defined as requiring something because it is essential or important. I love the way they use it in a sentence, by the way. I need help now, don't we all? Now let's define the word want. Want is defined as having a desire to possess or do something, to wish for. When you collect hot toys, these definitions start to blend together. Everything starts to feel essential and everything starts to feel desirable. And when that occurs, it becomes very difficult to distinguish a collecting want from a collecting need. But today, we're going to change that. We are going to go over some strategies that can assist you in distinguishing hot toys wants from hot toys needs. Let's start with the disclaimer that every collector is going to be different. There is no one size fits all approach to collecting that is going to work universally across the board for everyone. I'm gonna offer my experiences and feedback here today that I believe will be helpful in your collecting strategies. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have to make the best decision for yourself based on your unique set of circumstances and philosophies. And again, our focus today is to separate those collecting needs from those collecting wants and to prioritize the collecting needs so you have more things in your collection that you're feeling really excited about. Nonetheless, sometimes you gotta scratch the itch and you'll buy some wants and that is totally okay. So guys, there are six questions that we need to ask ourselves today to separate those collecting needs from collecting wants and avoid hot toys addiction. Let's jump right into that. The first thing I think we should ask ourselves when determining whether to buy a Hot Toys figure or not is, is this character a top tier character for you? When we as collectors reflect on our love of a certain character, we have to ask ourselves why we love them and how much. For me personally, my love of a character tends to be found in commonalities I find between myself and the character and or experiences I have watching them, usually with family or friends or some sort of other nostalgic experience. The characters that we should prioritize in our collections are the ones that we love or at minimum that we really like. These characters in figure form are the ones that let us walk into our collection room and feel an overwhelming sense of joy and satisfaction. I see Loki, I see Pennywise, I see Joel and Ellie, I see Jin Sakai, and I feel an overwhelming sense of joy because these characters have a lot of meaning to me. These are the characters we should be prioritizing and dedicating space for in our displays first and foremost. And the second question we wanna ask ourselves is, is this a top tier representation of that character? Anyone who's watched a franchise of films before knows that anytime there's a sequel, you can bet your ass that the characters are going to have a new outfit or costume because this is how the world works. Money makes the world go round and new costumes open up a world of possibilities for merchandising revenue. For fans of Marvel, Star Wars, and DC, we know that over time, head sculpts, costumes, accessories, tailoring, all of it can better over time, it generally does. It can also worsen and make you feel regret that you didn't pick up the first version because it became the definitive version. This is why it's crucial that whatever version of a character you consider collecting, that you ensure that it can ideally serve as a definitive representation of that character for you if need be. This isn't an absolute fail-safe process and you can't possibly predict every factor, but if you love a character, love the look, love the figure, and love the film, well, you probably got a winner on your hands. And the third question we need to ask ourselves is do you genuinely see yourself displaying this figure in your collection for a significant amount of time. It probably needs to be clearly stated that if you're buying this figure as a review for your YouTube channel or Instagram, or maybe you're buying it as a gift for someone or you're buying it to compare it to another figure for some sort of other content, there are clearly exceptions to these rules. But generally speaking, for collectors who are buying the figure solely to display it on their shelf, it's crucial we ask ourselves, how long is it going to be there? 
A few years isn't a bad amount of time to own a figure considering all the 2.0s, reissues, new versions, etc. But in general, we should aim for figure retention. This is going to vary greatly by collector based on your display space and your preference for experiencing new figures. To be honest, there are a lot of factors that make this process unpredictable. Will you end up liking the figure from the sequel more? Will Hot Toys remake the version you have and make substantial improvements? Sometimes we just need to be simply happy with what we have, so it's important to consider how happy will you be with the figure you're considering buying right now when something better pops up in the future. Hard to answer, hard to enact, but important to consider. The fourth question we need to ask ourselves is, will you care about this figure when the hype dies down? Hype is a powerful drug. When a new film or TV show drops, Hot Toys often tries to capitalize on the hype and puts relevant figures up for pre-order. This is a great business strategy because collectors like us make impulsive decisions, but will that love fade in 18 to 24 months time when the figure actually releases? Sometimes we fall out of love with a character or a film and then therefore subsequently fall out of love with the figure. Sometimes we succumb to FOMO and make purchasing decisions that we end up regretting. But when that hype starts to dissipate, think about how you'll feel then. Lately, I've seen several sales posts for in-art Gandalf as the hype and allure has started to wear off for some collectors. You can also look at exclusive figures like the recently announced Darth Revan and Lord Starkiller. The collecting community went wild for those two, and maybe you pre-ordered, but will you want them when the hype settles in two years? The hobby is about fun, and that should be the focus. Longevity is important too, though. I'd say think about the character and think about the story, and think about how deeply it resonated with you at the time, and speculate how deeply it's going to resonate with you in about 18 to 24 months' time when the figure comes out. And the fifth question you wanna ask yourself is, how does this figure fit into my existing collection? Your existing collection is crucial to consider when you're looking at adding to it. How does this new figure fit in with what you already have? Well, I'm personally not going to miss out on an amazing piece of a character I love if I really need it. I'll make space and move on from pieces I feel less connected to to do it. But for pieces I kinda sorta need or just want, I'm gonna need to consider how they're going to fit into my display. Space is one of the biggest considerations and limitations for collectors. And sometimes we feel the need to force things into our display, but it can dilute the overall presentation if it's too crowded. You may also want to consider how many versions of a specific character you want to display. How many Iron Man figures do you want to display? Which are the most important to you. The more you figure out before you click the place order button, the less you have to adapt to on the fly. And the sixth question we wanna ask ourselves is, is this figure truly good by your estimation? Is this figure a good quality representation, a high quality representation of a character that I love or like? Sometimes we will settle for a subpar representation of a character simply because it fills a void. It's a representation. This may be a viable short-term strategy, but long-term it can devalue the presence of your collection and you're likely to move on from it when something better comes along, which it will. It's great to love a character and want it on your shelf, but to what degree are you willing to settle? Everyone is going to have a different line and it's important to define yours. Standards change, as do circumstances. So it's important to truly be wowed by the figure at the time you make the purchase. Then you can feel comfortable with what may or may not be improved for future iterations of the character down the line. And that's that guys. Those are the six fundamental questions that I believe Hot Toys collectors should ask themselves when determining which figures to add to their collection. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button down below, click the subscribe button, and click the notification bell so you're notified when content goes live on this channel. There's reviews, there's live streams, there's live drops, there's breaking news, there's polls, there's a lot of good things happening on this channel. So everything one six scale collecting and even statue collecting from time to time can be found on this channel. Will.voxification is my Instagram. There's a lot of breaking news and updates and things that I post there. So make sure to check that out as well. Make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you collect? Do you find any of these questions or strategies helpful? How do you determine a Hot Toys want from a Hot Toys need because I do believe it is important to distinguish the difference because there's a lot of temptation out there nowadays. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Guys, thank you so much for watching as always. I really appreciate you guys and all the support you've offered me. So thank you so much once again. I will catch you in the next video. Peace out. See you later. Bye. Bye.